that Lawrence Pignon does wear his very first pink jersey of his career, now, taking the team time trial. Pignon has um, worn the yellow jersey in the Tour de France. Right, uh-huh. But never the pink jersey for the Giro. Right, uh-huh. This is his first Giro. There's Toriani, the tour organizer, in his car. And we start with Pignon in first, general classification, and Moser in second at four seconds, uh, Gagné at five seconds, and fourth, Byzantini at six seconds. This is stage two, uh, Pietro Santa Florence, to Florence. And uh, this is a 128-kilometer stage. That's uh, Peterson, a Danish rider uh, for Panini, which has gotten away. We're about 25 kilometers from the finish of the stage here. It's been a basically flat stage so far, and uh, just a, it's just a, about a 600-foot climb. Now here. How, how far away is he from the rest of the field? Well, Gissinger here is bridging up to. Uh, Peterson on the climb. We're on the climb, just some 22 kilometers from the finish. And uh, see, Maybe you can not. see him just ahead of him here by about uh, five, ten seconds. And the bunch is some 30 seconds back at this moment. So it's possible that these two riders get together that they could stay away to the finish. They, they possibly could because it's a very fast uh, uh, descent. But then it leveled. It, it was completely flat for uh, a while, just over a few overpasses and into the, into the city. Although because being so flat and fast, it would favor a lot of the sprinters, such as Froehler uh, of the Atala team, and Bon Tempe, as well as, uh, say, Fignon, who is good for his last kilometer attacks. Here we see uh, Peterson, still away on the climb, and Gissiger bridging up to him. And it looks like there's about 10 or 12 seconds, mm -hmm. separating the two riders. Uh-huh. There's Gissiger and the bunch right behind. I have to climb. Mm -hmm. That was it was a very fast uh, coming into the climb. The last 20 kilometers before this climb, and the pace got really whipped up uh, pretty fast. There's Moser at the front, down the descent. He's really quick on the descents. Moser. Now, would uh, wind have a factor in in determining the outcome of a race like this? With two riders away, would a strong crosswind affect the chances of the group catching? Well, it also would depend on uh, the support of the teammates in the bunch, if they really wanted them to stay away. But uh, we have, I really don't see an Atala or a Fanini rider at the front supporting uh, there's Gissiger again in the break, and now with Peterson. And there's some 10 kilometers from the finish now, 10, 12 kilometers, uh, after the descent. They seem to be working together. Mm hmm. Yeah, Gissiger, Gissiger would be the rider to have in the break because uh, he's a uh, two time winner, I believe, of the Grand Prix de Nations. Uh, and that's a classic time trial, uh, some 90 kilometers long. And uh, he's just really very, very, very strong. He's a good lead-out man. Here we come. This is uh, into the sprint finish here. Uh, like the last kilometer starting up. You watch uh, down in your lower right corner. You can see uh, Freuler coming up to the bunch now. Now that rider that just peeled off, was he leading out for mm -hmm. someone? Yes, he was. You can uh, see here we are. Yeah, you watch the third man back. And uh, watch off to your right here. Oh, and this is the last 200 meters coming in. It's Froehler. Now, Gavazzi was second. It looked like Froehler um, hooked to the second place rider. Was there? A, is there a protest or some sort of a? Well, his teammate wouldn't file a, a protest against him. But if there uh, would have been another rider, then perhaps there would have been a protest. Whether that would have been upheld again is another factor also, but uh, that would remain to be seen because it happened just the way it happened, but uh, I'll show another replay of it here. So a one-two finish in the stages for one team is a very good finish. That's a great finish, you bet. And uh, they average 39 kilometers an hour on this stage. And uh, here we are again. 
And if you watch off to the left a little bit too, coming up in the last 50 meters, you'll see another type of thing happen. Uh, right there. Oh yes. You know, it's uh, not too unusual to have riders uh, moving for position. Well, that's a rather large group. It probably is yeah, difficult to get a <laughs> clear line. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but that does look a little flagrant. <laughs> And into the finish. Well, Froiler is the world points track champion. So sprinting is nothing points. new to him. Right. And he has always traditionally done very well in the Tour of Italy in the points competition. And this Tour of Italy would be really interesting. This uh, There's there's Froiler now in his points. Seat. 